Hey guys, welcome back to Moon Strats. This week I'll be covering a Karasius combo deck. This idea has been played around with a lot in the past uh, among players, but the player FTW Cheese came up with a list pretty similar to this one, putting Rakoans in the mix and going up to six lands for Frog Tosser. So this deck will require uh, two forest, three lake, and one desert to make this all work. And I think this right here is the best sort of version that I've seen so far. Um, just this kind of idea using Rakoans and everything. So the idea is to use Karasius here. You get to summon an additional Karasius for each friendly one that died this game. And having three of these copies in the deck means that by the third Karasius that you summon, you'll get four different Karasius spawning from that singular last card, which is, uh, that's assuming that all of them die off, but this is pretty great value on its own, getting four of these three two Karasius spawning just from one card on that last one, but this deck wants to push that idea even further using Aurora's creation to make even more copies of that card. So the combo here is to play one Karasius, find a way to kill it off, then you play the second copy, which gives you two Karasius, uh, you kill those two off, and then you just keep replaying them until your opponent is just overwhelmed by the mass amounts of Karasius. And this deck usually wins by stalling until you reach that point in the game where your opponent just surrenders because they can't break through your wall of Karasius which isn't a usual win condition that most decks have. Uh, most decks want to win by dealing face damage. And a lot of the time with this deck, you won't, you'll, you'll just win from your opponent surrendering and you won't even get to touch your opponent's orb. And so because you essentially win once you've got those mass amounts of Karasius out, in most matchups at least, this deck's going to be really good against slower and mid-range decks but it can struggle sometimes against Rush or Tempo if you're not drawing all the cards you need to fend off that early game aggression. Uh, this deck needs to build up to those six lands and then play a somewhat expensive combo. And also with creation here, uh, we need the Crassius first for this combo to work. So drawing into creation on its own isn't going to help you with the combo. So we do have Curious Biomancer here to help draw our Karasius. And it's important to note that this will draw only non-blue creatures from the deck. So this deck has been specifically made with that in mind. So the only non-blue creatures in this deck that Biomancer can draw into are going to be Karasius and Majinata. So this consideration just guarantees that we're going to draw into our Karasius as much as possible. And since our land requirement is already three lake, one desert, one forest, uh, from this Karasius uh, and creation, we've also decided to include Frog Tosser here, just bumping up to one additional forest, since we're already there almost. And also using this Frog Tosser on top of the Biomancer, we've now got some nice Rakoans here, because Frog Tosser is a Rakoan. So some nice Rakoans to synergize here with Illusionist. And I talked about this card last week in my Rakoans guide. It's an incredible way to dish out four damage just for the expense of one Faria. And then of course to pair alongside this, we've got Rakoan Recruiter. This gives us some illusion targets, but it also gives us some nice early game collectors since this one card will give us both the three, four and this 1-1 one, one Rakoan from the gift, and also these extra bodies can just help stall out the game a little bit longer by building up a wall to block your orb as you're building up your combo. Failed Experiment is also an important card to this list. This deck takes a lot of lands and fairy to pull off, as I mentioned, so you often get into spots where you want to play both Karasius and Creation in the same turn. Uh, just in case all your Karasius get removed, and then you're left without any target for the creation. And this combo with creation 
Carassius costs 9 Feria to do so, so it's quite pricey, and Failed Experiment can give you that extra Feria you need to work with. So you get to play a creature for 4 Feria less, but then that creature will die. So this is great to use on Carassius since only that first copy of Carassius will die, but any extra spawns on it will still happen. And so in this case, it's essentially going to give you three Faria for free. Spend one on it, get four back. So it's a really efficient card for that reason. Uh, there's also a few other targets for this as well. You don't have to use it on Carassius. You can also use this on Aurora. Uh, you could use this on Biomancer, Lore Thief. Even uh, Figoro is a reasonable target. The three cost cards here, like Biomancer and Lore Thief, will use a tiny bit of value since failed reduces by four, but this is these are still really decent targets to get free Faria from. Just remember that these creatures do die instantly from failed, so if you don't have that many creatures on board, you may want to hold onto this failed experiment until you get some collectors down. And Majinata is another card that Failed Experiment can be used on, and this one doesn't make too much sense uh, looking at it, but it's just kind of how the card is programmed right now. Uh, so you can use Failed to discount this, but when you play it, this Swallow trigger happens first, before the creature should die from Failed. And so whatever Swallows Majinata, Majinata still stays alive, inside of that creature. Even though it's supposed to die, this is just how it's programmed right now. So failed on Maginata is a fantastic way to net you three Faria with no downside whatsoever. Just remember that this combo failed and Maginata costs seven Faria in total. Um, I used to make the mistake sometimes of thinking that failed discounts by four, so this goes down to six, but then of course failed costs one itself, so uh, it is a little less obvious than you might think. I mean, it seems pretty obvious, but sometimes you just get caught up in the moment, do the math wrong, and then you're stuck with uh, using failed and not having the amount to play it. So just remember this combo costs seven. Um, you can also use double failed on Maginata. That's another thing to uh, consider. And Fogoro, I talked about this in a previous guide as well. Urn of Gabria is great because it essentially acts like a better lore thief here. So you get to uh, fish for more combo pieces. Uh, lore thief included, draw two cards, but also Fagora with Urn of Gabria. Uh, you can draw those two cards, fish for more combo pieces. Um, but also because your deck has a bit more swarm than other lists that I've shown in the past, um, this. Ulani's Medallion can actually come in quite handy sometimes and potentially turn all of your little guys into more Carassius. So definitely consider this option with the Ulani's Medallion if you have the fairy to spend for it. It does cost 11, so it is a little bit pricey, but it can pay off quite well. And you'll notice that I am only running two water elementals in this list and also two frog tossers only. So Water Ellie is great to get early on, but to me it becomes pretty dead once you've built up your lands already, and this card is really powerful in most decks because of its mobile body, but in this particular deck you want to be spending most of your Faria on the combo, and you aren't as focused in jumping up your creatures aggressive to get to your opponent's orb. So I've dropped one of these, and then I also dropped one Frog Tosser, since, again, this doesn't play hugely into our combo very well, and we've dropped one Water Ellie as well. So the only purpose of Tosser, really, is to take a little bit of control back on the board and give you a little bit more time for your combo. Although Tosser is a great alternative way to win if the Carassius route isn't working so well. So sometimes your opponent can transform these Carassius early on with Frogify or uh, Mirror Phantasm or something, and that makes it really difficult to get any value off of them. So you might decide at that point to go down the alternative route of using these creations 
on your frog tossers instead. Um, so I've filled these two spots that I've taken out with Rune and Shrine to give more Feria for the combo. And this is really fantastic in my opinion. The player Bamser actually gave me this idea. And you have kind of limited lands to play things on though, so this is why I would only really want to want run one of these here. If you draw into two, it can be a little bit awkward. So I filled the other slot with Lore Thief. And like I said, this can just draw you into more combo pieces with that draw two cards option. And this is a good place to talk about alternative cards as well. So this Lore Thief slot right here, actually, I've been playing around with a little bit. Um, I use Octopus in this slot usually because I think that this is a really strong card against the competitive meta decks right now, especially against decks that this one struggles with. So the flexibility of Octopus gives you really nice options for those different circumstances. Like if they're really aggressive, this can come down as a 3-7, like a really sturdy body that's hard to break through. Or if they're like Green Rush, this can become a 7-3 to take care of the big stuff. Well, again, you're waiting for your combo. But this slot here uh, where Lore Thief is just depends on the current ladder that you're facing. And I've been finding quite often that there are slower, greedier decks on ladder. So I feel that Lore Thief's kind of better here to draw your combo earlier and just try and get those Crassius out quicker before your opponent's slow decks get to their win condition. But it's always good to read the ladder and make adjustments as you play because the decks that you see on ladder are going to change each day. Uh, so other cards that you could consider. Battletoads is really interesting because it gives you some swarm that's difficult to break through. This isn't as good against uh, like burn or something, but it does give you a double collector, uh, sort of. It gives you two creatures to collect with for four Faria. And again, swarm style of creatures, so you can just block your face with that wall of creatures. Um, in green, Runin's Guidance is something you could consider because of this five life heal. So uh, heal can be another useful thing to stall with. I feel that Guidance doesn't play towards the combo as well, but it's certainly a thing to consider, especially if you're facing burn or rush maybe even, uh, and that life becomes important. Um, and then of course the plus two plus two buff is always nice to have as an option as well. Spirit of Rebirth is a cool card for swarm decks like this, because whenever another friendly creature dies, you get a plus one plus one buff randomly given to something in your hand. Having so much swarm creatures, this can really stack up value uh, quite um, efficiently, and it only costs you three for a 3-3 three, three body, so even the stats and cost as it is is pretty solid. Just keep in mind, though, with this, it's a non-blue creature, so your Biomancers uh, will draw into the spirit and it'll take away a little bit from drawing into your Karasius. So that's the definite reason I don't run it in here, but it's um, a fun card to play around with if you want to try it out. Uh, Gift of Rakoa is another card. Again, because we're playing so much Swarm, this can be quite nice. The thing with this card that uh, I don't particularly like is this is what could be called a win more card. You need a bunch of creatures on the board already to make this work, and if you've already got a bunch of creatures on the board, you're kind of in a winning position already, or at least you're in a position where you're building towards the combo very effectively. And so I much prefer cards that help me if I'm falling behind a lot. This just feels like I could probably win from the position anyways if this card got good value. Especially once you get those multiple, multiple Karasius out. Sure, you could get a huge buff off of this, but is it really necessary? Like, Karasius on their own usually win you the game once you've got multiple of them out. 
And the only other card I wanted to talk about was Leia. So Leia's a really nice card in a lot of decks. Because of this four wild car, uh, cost, she's very flexible to fit in many lists. And she's very good for this list because of how she can stall out the game. Um, for four cost, she's a 3-4 bo body, which is quite solid in its own. It makes her quite difficult to remove with like damage removal like Soul Drain or Flame Burst or something like that. Uh, and then she's got Death Touch. With that three attack, which is kind of important still, Death Touch always needs the creature to have attack so that it deals damage in order to kill that creature, destroy any creature that this damages. So even Emperor's Command will still leave this at one attack and allow it to Death Touch into something. And then also this last words, uh, you get to summon a Shimmering Statue, which isn't um, incredibly relevant a lot of the time, but it can be quite nice for stall. Like, it stalls you an additional turn being able to play that uh, taunt down, and then even that one life that it gains could help against Burn or Husk or something like that. So Leia's an excellent card at stalling out the game just a little bit longer. And so the mulligan is kind of interesting here. You've got nine starting creatures. Uh, Water Ellie, Lore Thief, um, Crassius, and Recruiter. Those are all going to be your starting creatures. Um, but I also kind of like to keep Biomancer sometimes, since it can draw into my Crassius, and this is kind of really what I want to get into as, as part of the combo. Um, so it does cost four lands, which is quite pricey, especially if you mulligan the rest of your cards away and can't find a starting creature. But having nine starting creatures in the deck, I feel like it's generally worth the risk. So I feel that especially Biomancer, if you have no other starting creatures in hand, this is a good keep to have if you're going first since you get to be the first player to build a land, so you get uh, a little bit quicker up to those four lands. If you are going second, though, I'd probably recommend throwing away the Biomancer, unless I had another starting creature in my hand, of course. So just this is the consideration I would make. If I go first, I think I would keep Biomancer no matter what. If I'm going second, I would only keep this if I had a starting creature in hand. Um, and then even still, like, Recruiter and Water Ellie are incredibly strong going second with the Explore card. So I think it's worth, anyways, trying to mulligan everything for these two creatures. Uh, and then if you do get a starting creature, then for the other two cards, I'd recommend trying to get uh, more creatures for collection, or combo pieces, or even draw cards. So Lake here is usually going to be the first land you want to build, since you've got three lakes to build up towards, and the most important cards here are going to be in your lakes anyways. So you want to get started on those right away. And for this deck, we want to have a defensive land setup. So I'm going to be extending to both sides of the wells here. And I showed a very similar opening with my uh, Rakoan Recruiter in my last video that was on Rakoans, but in this one I'm really going to prioritize that lake first, and going lake first also gives us a really nice uh, line on turn three if we were to have Illusionist in our hand. So as I said in my last video, you're going to want to use your Explore to extend out to one of these sides, and I'm going to use it to push one of my creatures up uh, on the well spot that's on the same side that my opponent's going down. He's rushing me, of course, but let's just say he decided to pick a side. Um, so I might go explore here, forest, and play my recruiter here. So, and then the uh, little guy can go here. In this case, of course, I don't want to play this in range of here, but again, let's just say that he's extended down... Uh, this side in this case. So here, because he's extended down the side uh, we're imagining, this gives us a really nice line with Illusionist. Even if we don't have it in hand, we can at least threaten 
that we have Illusionist. So Illusionist lets us charge this guy up uh, two and contest this well spot, which makes our opponent really timid to continue their march down this side. So it might force them to tuck in the corner or switch sides and kind of lose this sort of land investment that they've made. And uh, again, as I said in my last video, you want the sturdier body on the same side that your opponent's going down, just so it can't be removed easily by like soul drain or something. Uh, if they decided to go down the same side that your already built land was on, what I would do in that situation is probably put the forest here, uh, keep the explore here, and then I can still drop my sturdy body here, and then put the 1-1 one, one on this side. Uh, in my last video, with all of those um, Rakoans, it's got many different colors, so I'm not sure I would have done that same play in my last video, just because I would like different colored lands on both sides. But in this list, I feel it's okay to have it like this. Um, I can always put a lake down here, and most of my uh, creatures in this list are going to be able to come down on lakes anyways. So Water Ellie going first. I like to stick to these defensive land spots still, uh, but because I'm going to be getting two lakes in one turn uh, off of this Water Ellie, I like to start here by starting with the forest, and then on the next turn I can just drop Water Ellie right on the well by putting my lake here, and then I can uh, spread out my lake by putting it here. So spreading my lakes out is really good. I won't have them clumped next to each other like this. And then also I get to place this lake on the well spot, which is usually what you want to try to do anyways. Uh, well spots are the best land spots in general to put your lands on most of the time. And any creature in this list that matters really, it can always come down on a lake. You've got Crassius, which can be spawned anywhere, and Maginata doesn't really matter where it goes, so the lakes are the ones to consider, and those will probably go on your lake spots. If I have the Explorer, though, I like to do this opening with the Lake Explorer Water Ellie, putting a lake on this spot, as we've seen many times in jump or guides with jump creatures in them. And this gets me in a spot right away where I might be able to get into a double collection position like this. Also, going second means it might give me the opportunity to dodge the side that he's going down. He has started center in this case, but maybe he's invested in one side, and then it gives me an opportunity to go opposite side. And this is an okay opener, especially this here. But it's also important not to push up too aggressive uh, with this deck, unless you have a lot of defense built up already beside your orb. Uh, so remember that this deck's win condition is uh, going for the combo as opposed to face hit so much. So if you decide to invest too far up here into your opponent's face, your opponent might decide to just ignore that aggression and race you by dropping all of their stuff right down here by your face, and this deck will almost never win a race. You have to have a lot uh, of pressure here. Maybe like if you had Aurora or something, you might be able to get something in, but against most decks and most situations, you're not going to be winning a race. So build these lands, sure, but then maybe consider building lands towards the opposite side. And then Crassius placement is interesting, since they don't need lands to be placed on. They can be summoned adjacent to friendly creatures, and you want to put these Crassius in places where you can kill them off with your opponent's creatures, uh, but if you place the Crassius in range of something, just realize that your opponent might be able to just retreat with their creature, especially if it has jump or charge, they can just run away. And then your Crassius might be stuck somewhere on the board in a spot where it is too far away to be able to trade into anything. So the best spots to drop these are in places where you know your opponent will have to trade into it at some point. So even somewhere aggressive in this case, 
might be okay because they might not be able to take three damage repetitively over and over. They may have to deal with it eventually. Or right near your orb is reasonable because they'll eventually probably have to come and hit your orb. So these are spots where your Carassius might be able to trade into things. Uh, even taking control of one side of the wells isn't terrible. It's not the best since your opponent could decide to just leave it alone, but this is also nice because it just might give you a free double collector there. And then some other good spots to put your Carassius, especially once you uh, start getting quite a few of them spawning, is trying to place them all on your opponent's lands. And this makes it really difficult for your opponent to play stuff to fight back with. Okay, so let's get into a sample match now. Tubble Carassius in our opener. So I like that. This uh, illusionist is going to be worthless, though. So we'll start building towards our Carassius. So him building center means that he can just run away from these, which kind of makes me want to hang on to them one more turn. Um, I give up one collection, but I think that's more than fine to try and get this Crassius out. And I don't know which side I want this lore thief on yet, so I'm going to build over here. Oh. He drew. Interesting. Okay, so let's just take our Lore Thief. See what we get. Well, we don't have deserts yet, so we can't play the Carassius anyways. Spectre. Okay, so he's playing Husk. So this will trigger next turn. Unless I can get rid of cards. I can only get rid of really... One, two, three... So I could Humbling as well. And then I'll just have one, two, three... Three cards left in hand. So that sounds pretty good. Um, would like to block this collection spot. So we'll fail this first one. Humble this. And then play two Carassius. Uh, one between the wells. So now we get out of range of this four or more cards in hand, so this won't be able to trigger. Um, if he's playing Mono Yellow Husk, which it looks like he is with Spectres, he doesn't want to build too many lands. So putting this Carassius both on this side, I feel, is pretty nice to do. Uh, one thing about this play is um, I used up two Carassius in my hand already. So if he manages to kill both of these this turn, then uh, I'm going to have to really fish for that last Carassius. So he's just going to run away. Totally fair. Again, I want to stay out of range of this, so I might end up Playing the shrine down somewhere. Yeah, so the thing is, if I step up, he could have a clear on both of these, which I don't like too much. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be investing all of my lands on this side, though. The shrine. So I'm not going to collect this turn. Make it a little bit difficult for him to clear both of these. It would be nice if at least one could survive. 
until I draw into creation. So I don't like leaving this double collector alive. Frog tosser would be really nice for that. Um, I could just threaten though with a recruiter. I think that's okay to do. And then next turn I have the option to double neutral and still get the frog spawn, but I am going to play this out of range here. Um, and where this guy goes, I think I'm actually kind of alright with collecting. Because um, I do have quite a lot here now. I don't think I need to worry so much about losing these. Uh, yeah, and this Rakoan here puts it in a spot for Illusionist. That's pretty nice. Storyteller. So that's going to be really good for me. Uh, he does have husk, but this lets me draw into my combo pieces quicker. Double husk, though. But here I've got a full clear on his board, unless he plays something else. I get to illusionist this up. Double neutral, toss this. So Illusionist does have to go here. can come there. Uh, I actually can get out of range of Husk if I play another card. Because uh, I could just throw away this Illusionist and heal this Rakoan, this uh, Frog Tosser back up. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to hold. It's Pretty likely that he has like Merchant or another Storyteller by now, since he's only played one and he's on eight cards now. So it's likely that he just draws, fills my hand anyways, and this will be a useful trick to fight stuff with. He's on 15 Faria, so I'm expecting some Colossus to come down. Is fine. I have answers to that. Um, humbling Illusionist cleans this up. Um, I might play some more Carassia. So how many do I get? I've lost two only, I think. Oh, this is my last one. I cover his lands? I should get three Carassia. So one, two, three. That costs four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I could draw, actually. Creation. Let's go with this. Probably building this land was better. I need to sidestep this guy so that Carassius can hit into this. That was a probable line, but maybe playing Water Alley was a mistake, actually. I didn't need to do that. 
because I should have saved the Feria for Imaginata and other things. Yeah, so that was definitely a mistake. Should have saved the Feria up. Aurora's nice. Oh, we got failed. Yeah, and this isn't in a spot where it can collect either. I could have moved it up as well. So I'm gonna get uh, five Faria. No way I can play this. Oh. Okay, so stepping him out of range so that I can't kill that husk. Oh my. That's nice to see. I think these Karasius are gonna come down now. He's on six cards. Um, so it's always an option to just leave these up. Um, to mill himself, but with this Colossus hitting my face, that's gonna be a little bit spooky. Um, blocking my face with Karasius is also a little bit scary because it can just be Soul Drain, so I might even block with Biomancer. Yeah, Biomancer and Karasius could be okay to do. Let's do it like this. I'm so smart, I astound myself! And um, I, also building this land is important because it means that he can't just build a desert and wind soldier this. So this is a really good block to my face. This gives me the perfect Aurora target, too. Um, we will be collecting. Okay, yeah. So, he discovered that he couldn't win there. He was getting really low on cards, and breaking through this and all of my Carassius was going to be very difficult to get through. So that's kind of how the deck works. Um, stall and just block your face with walls of creatures, get out these Carassius and um, just win by your opponent surrendering because they can't just they just can't break through all of this stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.